Hey everybody, um, the title of this thing is uh, how to, uh, well it's actually the title is uh, Charles Daly N4S Disassembly, Reassembly, and a little bit more. And I added a little bit more because after doing a lot more looking on the internet and encountering some things from gun shop to gun shop, I've come to learn that there are a number of variants or models, whatever you want to call them, okay, different styles. These are not all built the same and they do not all look the same. So you need to be very careful if you're going out to buy a Charles Daly, which I will always refer to from here on out, hopefully a CD. So if you're going to buy a CD N4S, make sure you know the one that you're getting because a lot of them you see on the internet will have the M16 style, the AR15 style, hand grip and the elevated sights, uh, no, I just didn't have it, okay? Um, and there's going to be some other differences in how they appear. So just make sure you're getting the, the, the weapon that you want and the one that uh, meets your needs. This is the N4S 12 gauge semi-automatic shotgun. Right here on the butt, near right near the butt, it has CD Defense. That's CD Defense. So this is, a, I think, an older model, even though I bought it brand new. I think this is an older model called the Defense. If you go on the CD site, website, and by the way, there was a guy named Charles Daly. He did create a firearms group and then make firearms. But I think uh, recently, I don't know how long ago, uh, the name was sold out to Chiapa firearms and it's not Charles Daly's anymore it's actually Chiapa using the name all right so um, just be aware of that does it make a difference I don't know it might we'll see I'll tell you something <clears throat> to be sure what you're getting uh, and one of the things that I said was uh, it's gonna be a little bit more other than just disassembly and then reassembly um, since there are the, so many variants out there, um, what I decided to do is not necessarily an unboxing, but show you the things that came in the box with it, show you an important sticker on the box that you need to be aware of. And I went out to the range and did some firing and put in, uh, sighted in my sights and all this kind of stuff. Um, and uh, I thought that uh, you might want to see how some of the firing went on because as I looked at the videos if there was just an unboxing somebody would complain they didn't fire well you're never going to make everybody happy and I'm certainly not worried about that if I was I wouldn't be making these videos because uh, I'm no George Lucas that camera over there is older than Methuselah all right and when I went out and shot the part when I was actually shooting the weapon the sun was coming up wrong in the whole nine yards. Can you see what's going on? Yeah, you can see what's going on. Is it going to win an Academy Awards? No. And if the only comments you got are comments about the production value, don't waste your time. I ain't going to read them, okay? So, got that out of the way. Got to come in a box, nice colorful little box, but right here on the side there's a, there's a, a, a label that talks about what weapon's supposed to be in there. And mine is supposed to be an N4S Bullpup semi-automatic shotgun, one to five round mag, MC1. I have no idea what the MC1 is for. Barrel length is 18.5 inches, which is what appeals to me most of all about this. And uh, the finishing is black, and a poor finishing at that. It scratches real, real easy. Okay, no mention of CD Defense. All right, so what are you going to pull out of there? You're gonna pull out of there a manual, no problem. There's a manual that comes with it, and it's got the stuff that you would expect in a manual. Don't point this at anybody. Don't stick the barrel in your mouth, pull the trigger, yada, yada, yada. And you'll find uh, a little breakdown with some pictures in there, how to break it down, which, eh, it might be okay. I think if you have this model, once you see this, you'll be doing a little bit better than using this breakdown thing. It's not a bad thing. Um, it talks about the guarantee, the warranty. It's got a five-year, two-year, pretty decent, three-year, eh, we'll see. Okay, and after that, you're on your own. But what it does not have, what it does not have, what were you thinking, Chiapa? It does not have a schematic to tell you the part number and the name of each part. So if something breaks, and I want to order the part, 
Uh, I, got, I guess I gotta send this thing back, I don't know. And the reason I don't know is Chapa won't answer one, their dadgum phone, and it won't answer their dadgum email. I guess they wanna blame everything. Everybody blaming the thing on this COVID stuff. Bull, there's too many other stores out there, online stores. So Chapa, get somebody on the phone, get somebody answering the, fem the email. Almost said female, I don't know. All right, so you got that. Am I upset with Chapa? No. You're gonna get a choke with it. You're gonna get the typical Turkish choke. These guys are made turkey, all right? In fact, if you took some of these parts out and compared them to, say, a Rock Island Armory uh, 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 VR60, they look exactly the same. I have no doubt that they just got a big barrel and people go around picking up parts, okay? But I haven't had real luck with this, and neither has a friend of mine who has a VR60. So the first thing I did was say, okay, cool, that's nice. I think I'll stick that over there. And I went out and I got me a decent Carlson, okay, uh, choke. And it's not only a choke, but it's vented at the front, extended, and it acts as a compensator to a certain amount as well. All right, so that's pretty good. You're going to get a couple of uh, Allen wrenches in there, and one of the Allen wrenches is to put this on, the charging handle, because the charging handle comes in the bag loose, and the reason it does is if the charging handle was on, you couldn't close the box. You'll figure that out. Uh, unless you cut a hole in it and let it stick up, I guess. They don't want to do that, and I don't blame them either. So there's a screw, drop screw down in there, use the big Allen wrench, lock that daggum thing on, use some Loctite, and be good to go. With the choke, you're gonna get a choke key. But since then, I'm not gonna use a choke. I got so many of those keys, it's unreal. You're gonna get this wrench, okay? You're gonna get this wrench, and you need this wrench, okay? Because what this thing's gonna do is help you take apart this weapon right back here, and I'll show you that. In fact, there's a close-up on it, so when I try to do it here, you can't see it really well. I've got a couple of close-ups on a few things. so. This wrench is very important. And then you get one, one five round magazine. Everybody else I looked at had two five round magazines, Chapa, but you're only gonna get one from those guys, all right? So that's all you're gonna get. I will give you some good news. A friend of mine that has that VR60, let me use one of his five round magazines and one of his nine round magazines. And they fit and they fire just fine as you will see out on the range. And then as I was standing there and with the box open looking at the stuff at the store with the representative there salesman, I pulled this little bad boy out. And I said to myself, well this can't be a, a, a flash suppressor because it uh, you know, it's not built like decent enough flash suppressor. It certainly isn't a compensator because it's not vented in any way whatsoever to, to, to cut down on re help re cut, cut down on recoil. So I asked the guy behind the counter, I said, what's this for? He said, looks cool. Looks cool? I said, okay, I understand that. And in my mind, I'm thinking, I want functionality. I want to know the function of it. And so I asked him, I said, no, what is the function of this thing? And he looked at me like I didn't hear him the first time, and he said, it looks cool. So you get one each, looks cool, which I'm not going to use. It would go right here, all right, on the barrel. But I'm not going to put it on the barrel because I don't want it interfering with my uh, um, uh, Carlson's compensator and, and, and choke, all right? Not going to happen. So that's everything that's going to come in the box. So let's start taking this thing down. Let's do the obligatory. So no one out there writes me up. Okay, we know it's empty. It's been empty for a while. One of the first things you're going to want to do when you take this bad boy down is unscrew this little screw right at the butt. And you want to elevate this POS cheek, cheek stock. And you've got to get this thing up as high as you can and lock it back down. Now the reason that you want to do that is when you go to take your rear part, or your, I mean your upper from your lower, all right, when you go to take your upper off of your lower, um, right back here, there's a pin and there's a little arm that comes down that the pin goes into. So you have to lift this pretty high. Actually, you have to rotate it. I'll show you that. 
this can get in the way. If you have it down, odds are you're going to have a bunch of scratched up stuff when you're done and you're not going to really get it out. So just lift that thing up. No big deal. Okay. Now, my NS4, I'm sorry, N4S, I keep calling this thing NS4 all the time in my mind. The N4S, the, def the defense, CD defense, has four pins. Four. Okay. And what you have to do, I have to help hold the upper to the lower. Get something that you want to use, like a some kind of punch. Oh, it's not real sharp, gonna mess it up or whatever. And just get them started. There's one right here. Come on. There you go. One in the back. And there's two in the middle. One just in front of the magazine and one right behind the handle. All right, don't try to push them all out first time. Go ahead. Now you can just uh, pull them out all the way, get them clicked. And again, most of you guys know, the whole idea is, is, is just to hold the upper to the lower. All right, if you're brand new at one of this style weapon then, now you know what it does. <clears throat> Now at this point in time, I'm going to lift the upper portion and rotate it, okay? It doesn't matter which direction I rotate it. The point is, is I'm going to rotate it so that I can get it out from underneath that POS cheek stock. Because this bad boy right here, as you can see, will hang down, okay, and will get in the way. So you don't want that to happen. Now that's all you're going to take apart. You're not going to mess with anything here on, on your lower, all right? You're not going to mess with anything. You'll notice it triggers up here and the hammer's back here. And there's a little rod that comes all the way back. Be very careful cleaning it so you don't mess up that rod. But there you go. No big deal. Get it all cleaned off, wiped up when you're done. In fact, don't, don't take this apart until you get this clean. Just, then you just set it to the side and you're ready to put it back together. Now, I have my upper, and my upper has a forward section and a rear section of synthetic. This entire weapon, this entire CD Defense N4S, okay, bullpup, is synthetic. And let me point something out. You'll notice that I have a red green, a true glow uh, red green dot, 5MOA style sight. You've got a Picatinny rail that goes across, but it breaks right here. This stays on the rear section and the rest comes off. So if you mount, and you're wondering how I found this out, if you mount your sight on both of these, you'll never get it apart. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay, I'll admit it, I did that. So uh, <clears throat> make sure that you mount it on either the back section or the forward section. And since there's no schematic, that's gonna be my terminology, all right? All right, so we've got our upper separated from our lower. Next thing we're gonna do is a retaining screw right here. Just twist it. I don't know if you can hear that brr, brr, brr. Lift it off. Now, if you're new at taking weapons apart, let me how, or if it's the first time you've taken a particular weapon apart, something I always teach my, uh, I, I was in the Army for like, I was in the Army active for 20 years and, and, and a trainer for, for 15. Anytime you're taking anything apart, lay it out in the sequence that you do. So that's going to be my first part that came off. What's it going to be? My last part that goes on. All right. Now at this point in time, the forward part of your upper should come right off. There you go. Your charging handle does not come off. Just clean down that thing, run a bore down there, clean it up, do whatever. Be real careful if you're messing with oils and stuff. Don't get it on your sight if you have a sight like mine. All right. Now I'm going to set that right back here. The only thing that I do when I clean this 
is because there's, there's really nothing to clean. So I'll, I'll run a, a rag through there and see if, see if it's dirty or whatever. If it is, I might put a little bore cleaner in there and then swab it out and then put a very, 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 very super light coating of oil. But there's a spring right here. So what I'll do is I'll take me some lubricant, drop, put a couple of drops in there and work that. That's me. Do what you want to do. It's your weapon. There you go. Now, what we have is barrel assembly, my terminology, and the rear upper, my terminology. I'm going to quit doing that. Chopper, you got the idea. Give us a schematic. I, I couldn't even find a schematic online. Okay, so what we want to do at this point in time is uh, take off the gas assembly, the gas piston assembly. There's a, a gas piston shroud. There's the gas piston itself. There's gas piston ring, I believe they're called. Um, and uh, I'll show you those because they're hidden underneath here. And they're, I'll tell you what their function is. And this is just, just a little just screw hold down. So go ahead, get a good grip, unscrew it. That comes right off. Next in line. Now, this is where you gotta be dang careful. Slide your bolt down and move the gas piston housing down and these two little tiny portions will fall out. It's like a washer that's been cut in half. Now without those things, what can happen is your gas piston housing can slide up the barrel. So if you forget these first time you fire it, that, that boy is traveling, all right? So when you put it back together, which we'll do, but I'm gonna show you it right now anyway, there's a little indentation there. This is fun. Hold it with one finger, get the other one in on the other side, and now let your gas piston up. And you see how your shroud cannot go up now. It just can't go up. And for you guys sitting there going, I can't see that. Watch this. All right, that help you out a little bit more? Yeah, I know. I like to be able to zoom in with this thing, but like I said, this camera's older than Methuselah and so am I, so, you know, big deal. All right, so, you're gonna pull your gas piston down. You're gonna take what I call the broken washer off, because I don't know what the nomenclature of it is. You're gonna pull your gas piston housing up, put it in line. You're gonna take your gas piston, pull that up. Now let's talk about gas pistons for a second. I have heard one guy on YouTube say, oh, he changes his gas piston every time he shoots two, uh, three inch shells and he changes it back when he shoots two or three quarters. Now I know my friend's VR60 has two pistons. He has a light and a heavy. And it, he uses the light or the heavy based solely on the length of the shell, not the power of the shell, which I makes no sense to me, but I'm not here to make sense, okay? I'm just here to show you how to work this. This weapon only came with one piston. I did not get two pistons with it. So whether I shoot three inch or two and three quarter, I got one piston. 
Well, I'm only going to shoot two or three quarters. This is a house defense weapon. This is not a hunting weapon. I can plant targets with it. And I've got a Lee loader and I make my own shells, okay? I use Winchester double A's, Halls. I use uh, CCI Magnum uh, primers. I put 18.5 grains of red dot powder in there and then one ounce of uh, number one or number two uh, lead shot, not buckshot, lead shot, because this is a house defense and I want it to stay within the house should I just go wild firing and somebody tries to get in. So that's your piston. That's your next thing in line. One for this weapon. If you get two, there you go. Now, remember I said you're going to get this wrench? All right. Remember, lefty, loosey, righty, tighty, right? Okay, so we're going this way. When you put this thing on back together, you do not need to tighten this bad boy so hard that you can't get it off. Now, you might have said again, I can't see that. Watch this. You don't need to see me unscrew this. Watch this. That help you out so you got to see up close what it's doing that's the best i can do like i said i can't zoom this bad boy in and out can't do that all right you know you've got it all up or unscrewed when you can lift it when you can lift it up a little bit you can do that do not lift it up and let it slam back down why because you're slamming threads on threads you don't want to do that not good for the thread don't slam threads on threads. So all you need to know that that's loose. And what does that mean? That means you can now separate the rear portion of the upper from the barrel assembly in the bolt. Just pull on that. Ah, you gotta be strong. If not, catch the edge of the table. Do not tell my old lady I just did that. She will beat me till cows come home all right now you've got your back half of your upper assembly oh biggie dot sits right there but you see how that pick a pick a tinny rail goes <laughs> yeah yeah make sure be careful about that don't mount your uh uh sights on there and be on two separate rails you can't can't get them apart now you can physically take the bolt out with the bolt rail assembly and with a lot of maneuvering you can get it over this screw but i guarantee you, you're going to scratch your bolt up and it's going to be no no not good so what I recommend is just get a good grip on your bolt, all right? Slide your bolt rod up and then lift up and take it off, okay? I can't see that. Watch this. All right, no complicated thing there. All right, so you're gonna pull the little three things off from the bolt, from the, the the main the main barrel. You're gonna have your spring. You're gonna have your well, I, call, I call this the bolt rod, bolt bolt assembly because I don't have a schematic, and that's the retaining thing. Screws on one end, and you got those notches which you saw in the, in the up close. So be careful of that. Now at this point in time, 
do make sure that you're either over a rug or you got good control. You can go ahead and take your bolt out. And the reason I say that is, your extractor, you drop that bad boy and I just don't want to think what will happen to your extractor if it lands dead on the extractor. That would not be good. All right. And there you go. There she all is. The only other thing that I would do at this point is take out my, uh, my choke, lay it to the side, because I don't clean the barrel with the choke on. I clean it separately. I clean the choke separately. I clean the barrel separately. Oil up the, the threads really well, put it back on, and then re-oil the barrel again. All right? So, you don't need, need to see me unscrew that. Got to use one of these or something. Doesn't matter. So there you go. That's just that. It's not, not hard for this one. I gotta admit though, first time I saw these things, I understand a friend of mine, well he's not a friend, but I'd like, I wouldn't mind being his friend. A uh, young lad in Canada has a video on taking his N4S, in fact I thought he had a 12 gauge and in, in doing emails back and forth come to find out he's got a, a 20 gauge because he's in Canada and you can't have 12 gauges in Canada. I guess you die different from a 20 gauge and you die different from a 12 gauge. I don't know. Break into my house, you'll find out how you die from a 12 gauge. All right, that's simple. Now, having said that, uh, he doesn't have these. And uh, so I was kind of curious about that. But uh, so that's why I found out he had a, the 20 gauge. Not on 20 gauges, at least not on his. He had one called the Ranger. This one's a Defense. All right, there you go. So we're gonna put this bad boy back together. Got your barrel assembly. Got your bolt. Here's your uh, extractor. There's your extractor housing. Making these names up. Slide it right in. Complicated. All right. Here we go down the line. There's my uh, screw. That's going on. Spring. That's going on. A bolt rod. If you got a grip, that bolt will fall out like you just saw there. You caught it. Boom. There we go. Now, you want to keep a grip because this thing will have a tendency, at least mine does, to want to back up a little bit. You don't want it that to do that. And when you pick up the rear part of your upper, you'll notice <clears throat> that there's little channels in there. You're going to notice these on just about every bullpup out there in some semi-automatic shotguns, especially if they're made turkey. So just squeeze this together and these two runners on the bottom of the bolt rod assembly, beat it up, fit right in there, slides right in. Don't slam it in like your thread on thread again. All right. And then at this point, Take your time, make sure you're not cross threading it. Comes off pretty easy, but for me, I don't know why, it's a bear to get back on. So all I gotta do, do that a little bit, then see if I can do it by finger, I can't. Of course, I'm in my 70s and I got arthritis and I got rheumatoid, and, you know, and I used to be 6'2 and gorgeous, but this is all that's left. Do not jump out of airplanes. Actually, the jumping isn't that bad. It's the stopping at the bottom on the earth. That's the bad boy. Landed in trees. Landed on highways. Landed on top of vehicles. Every now and then, hit the drop zone. All right, once you get it tight, don't King Kong it. Because you got to get this thing off later. Rear half upper together. Good to go. So, what are we going to put on now? Well, look at our line. There's a gas piston. Gas piston goes over. Gas piston housing. 
goes over and then you'll notice that that gas piston housing comes just to, almost to the top of that little groove that you saw in that close-up so you got to obviously pull this down a little bit get this broken washer stick that bad boy in there let it slide up nice and gentle you're good next in line painting screw there you go there you go so basically you're good to go you've got your barrel assembly all put back together again all right next thing we're going to put on this little bad boy right here now somebody didn't show you because you get stuck in there and old and forgot there is a spacer it goes right down in there you can see very easily even without close-up those channels all right so nice and gentle there you go spacer spacer has little wings one size flat one size curved Take the curved portion down. And if you turn it around the wrong way, it won't go in there, so no sweat. You can't mess it up. If, if you could, I would. Get that all the way down. Last piece. First thing off, last piece on. Get it going. Now listen up. there you go now your upper is put together it should cycle no problem all right get our lower make sure our pins didn't fall back in there which they will from time to time Notice how I've got this thing canted, right? At an angle, so it'll slide in there nice and easy. Turn it, let it set down. Now, what I like to do is making sure to check the gap, come up to the front, squeeze it, not quite all the way in, but enough, come to the back, squeeze it, put them in. Now that I know everything's gonna fit, nothing gotta be forced, Go ahead and put them in. And she'll lock and everything works just fine until you come back here and press. Don't forget at this point, put the POS cheek down. All right, there you go. So that's how you disassemble and then reassemble the N4S Defense. And I don't know how many of the others. I don't know. I don't, you're going to have to just check that out. There's one other one thing that does come with this that I didn't mention. It comes with fixed sights. All right. So you're going to get a forward sight. You're going to get a rear sight that you slide on, screw down. All right. But it, uh, no, no, I don't like that. Uh, I, I like the... Um, I can keep both eyes open, be, uh, have my uh, situational awareness going on with this. I'm used to these, used them a lot. Okay, put the dot where I want the dot to be and just pull the trigger and watch it go splat. All right, so there you go. So once you, what, like I said, one of the last things that I did was I went out and uh, um, sighted this thing in, which you don't see that part. What you see is shooting afterwards. So here, here's it being fired with the one Chiapa five round mag. A borrowed from a friend five round mag from uh, Rock Island Armory for the VR60, which also meets the VR80. So if you go into a gun store and you say, hey, have you got any mags for VR60 from Rock Island? 
And he'll go, no, we just have the ones for the 80s. Well, he should know, but be surprised. So, oh, I'll, I'll take that. And take a gun with you and everything, make sure they fit. They fit mine. They work fine in mine. I don't know about yours. Let me always put that little caveat in there. I'm sorry. So, check out the uh, firing here and see what happened, and we're going to talk about one more thing. I'll be shooting two magazines out here today. This is the one that actually came with the weapon. The other two that I'll be shooting comes with a uh, VRB, I'm sorry, VR60 from Rock Island Armory, uh, courtesy of a friend. Rock Island Armory gives you a backup to maybe you can go buy some somewhere else. Both those were five rounds. This is a Rock Island Armory, nine round. Bend it over here a little bit because I got the camera angled down. Two, three different mags. Two from Rock Island, one from Chiapa. All right, like I said, I'm sorry the sun was there. What did it show you? It showed you it fired. It showed you it fired using two different companies' magazines, which they're probably all the same company. I don't know. Who cares? The point is that it'll fire using the Chiapa mag. It'll fire using the Rock, uh, Rock Island Armory uh, mag. All right, it'll, it'll do fine. Uh, now I'm at a dilemma to where friend of mine said, well, I want to know what you think of it when you, when you sight it in and bring it back. Should I get one? And to tell you the truth, I'm going to tell him no. I'm going to say, no, you don't want to buy one of these. And 
And it's not because the gun won't fire. It's not because the gun's not accurate. You saw them targets flying like everywhere, man. I, I think only this one, and that's because I don't know why I wasn't paying attention. Um, there was a, you probably heard some other firing. I wasn't near anybody at all. About 100, 150 yards away is a rifle range. This was the shotgun range. I was the only person out there, and it's basically a berm, and it had like an almost inch, inch and a half of water in it because it had rained and trying to find a dry spot. Oh, and you might say to yourself, boy, you were close to them targets. Uh-huh. I was close to them targets because, remember, this is a house defense gun. This is not a hunting gun. This is not a shooting long distance gun. The longest that this will legally shoot is 30 feet down my longest hallway, all right? If we're out in the yard and they're running away and they're at 40 feet, I don't care if they're at 20 feet if they're running away. In my state, North Kakalaki, North Carolina, you can't shoot them. If they're in the house, free fire zone, dude. Open fire. But I don't shoot long distances, so I don't. You don't practice. You practice what you're going to do. If you're going to shoot long distance, practice long distance. If you're going to shoot up close, practice up close. It's just that. I mean, it ain't, it ain't rocket science, okay? So yeah, I was shooting close. You, you know, you can still miss with a shotgun close. Oh heck yeah! When you've got a choke on there. And that thing's going out, and it ain't got, I mean, it's not got very far to spread. And yeah, yeah, you can miss. So, yeah, you need practice. Okay, so would I recommend this? No. And what's the primary reason? Well, what? there's two reasons that I wouldn't recommend this gun. And, and one of the reasons is stupid. At least stupid to me. Look how they did this handle. This is nice. I mean, when I actually fire this, I grip and my finger goes over the front which gives it a chance of being burned if I fire it a lot, but that's how I grip it. You can't do the C grip with, with a shotgun. You know, it's just going to fly out of you. You know, you got to get a good grip, all right? So that's how I grip that bad boy, okay? I prefer a handle. There's no Picatinny rail up here, and the way this is made, it's going to be a bear pull one up there. Luckily, I'm a woodworker as well. So I can make me a piece of wood that is curved and will form and fit this with a flat bottom. And it only has to be about a quarter of an inch or three eighths of an inch, maybe half inch most. And uh, I can mount me a Picatinny rail, pick uh, rail to it and uh, put me a handle on it if I have to. I have to just drill the holes, no big deal. So, but uh, no, I, I'm not wild about the handle. And one thing, the biggest thing that would stop me from buying this again, and would not, and if somebody once says, what do you think of it? I'll tell them, but then I'll also tell them this. There is no support. I have re, I have called and called and called and got nothing. Okay. Emailed, 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 nothing. And I'm not buying this COVID-19 stuff. All right. And even though there's nothing on the website about COVID-19 much at all, uh, except maybe shipping. Well, no, I don't want anything. Ship, I want you to answer a daggum question. I want you to tell me where I can get a schematic. I want you to tell me, you know, how do I register this thing for the warranty? N no support whatsoever. So, Chapa, I'm not going to recommend your weapon to anybody. I'm not going to do that. If you guys like it, if you think this is a great weapon, go for it. It's not a bad weapon. It just ain't got good support. That's all there is. My opinion. All right. All right. Have fun. Go out and get you one. Don't get you one. Don't matter. It's up to you. See what you like to do with it. I'm, I'm probably keep it unless I can find somebody to buy it. Who knows? Catch you later.